Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and I just want to take a few minutes here to show you the latest skin on frame pack canoe that I'm working on. For those of you who follow my channel here, you know that I spent all of 2018 building a brand new kind of skin on frame boat building system where we're building canoes using mortised and laminated gunnels and bending the ribs in more like you would see in a skin on frame kayak using mathematical formulas to figure out the shapes as opposed to what you normally see, which is people building a strong back and some canoe molds. Now there's no, nothing really better or worse. There's advantages to the strong back and canoe mold system. The advantages to the system that I just created is that it goes a lot quicker because you don't have to build the strong back and the canoe molds. And also it gives you a lot more freedom to be able to change all the variables of your canoe. So you're not really constrained to someone else's design. So that's what I did in 2018. I built 15 different canoes. I put up a beta version of the video course and plans on my site. So that's definitely worth checking out, especially if you're someone who's interested in experimenting because inside of that reduced priced beta course, what I also have is a series of canoes that I haven't built yet that I'm really curious about that I'm willing to offer free videos and free plans to anyone who's willing to tackle one of those. So this is a way to potentially get the entire system for free if you don't mind experimenting with some different ideas. So 2018, what I did is I built nothing but symmetrical canoes in all different sizes, and I really refined the whole shaping system that I worked out to build these canoes. 2019 is when I'm gonna really start stretching that system and trying to build as many different variations of things and as many variations and shapes as possible to see where the system works well, where it doesn't work, where it needs improvement, and where it's just not gonna work at all. So I felt like because what I did mostly last year was pack canoes, I would start out 2019 by building a pack canoe here that is not a symmetrical canoe. And this was a little bit nerve wracking for me because I didn't really know if it was actually gonna work. Theoretically, the system should work, but I was really kind of holding my breath until I got this guy finished and I saw that I could really force some substantial asymmetries into the system and the whole thing would still hold together. So specifically what I did is I built two canoes. I built this full-size pack canoe here and I built this half-scale model pack canoe here, which mostly I just brought out because I want to show it off because it's cool. I rarely make these because they're super hard to build compared to a full-size canoe, but it is kind of a neat thing to have and it works as a good teaching tool. So shaping on this particular canoe as, as opposed to what I've done in my other canoes, like I said, is asymmetrical. I decided to make the stern of this an inch and a half lower than the bow. I decided to make the widest point of this boat a little bit further back from the center. And just general dimensions, I decided to go with something that I hadn't done yet, which is not a set of nesting canoes, but just a single canoe. Because when I was building all the nesting canoes, sometimes I was feeling really restricted. I would feel like the bigger size wasn't exactly what I wanted, but it had to be a certain way because otherwise the smaller size wouldn't fit inside of it. So it was really kind of freeing on this particular experiment to not have to worry about that and just work with the dimensions that I could. Last canoe that I built was 13 foot seven inches long. And I loved how that canoe paddled with the exception of the fact that it had a little too much rocker in the end. So that kind of inhibited its sailing performance a little bit. And even though it wasn't that big and I realized just how kind of addicted I've gotten to these little 12 foot pack canoes. I mean the just golden rule of small boats is the harder it is to use something even slightly harder the much less that it's going to get used which is why most trailer sailors and little rowboats that get built just end up dying on trailers and people's driveways and backyards because if something's even slightly cumbersome to use you're never going to use it and the opposite of that is a wee lassie shaped pack canoe. Weighs 19 pounds, you wanna go boating, you pick it up with one hand, chuck it in the back of your truck, you're on the water, you can just get out, have a good time. And you know, there's a lot of limitations that comes with a craft that size, but there's a lot of advantages to being able to do that as well. So like I just said, what I did for this particular boat is I wanted to make the best boat I could for me out of 12 foot lumber. I'm 5'8", uh, 175 pounds. And this boat here is 11 foot 10 because that's as long as I can possibly get out of 12 foot lumber. It's 27 inches wide in the middle because that is kind of a good compromise between a stability where I can just barely paddle it on my knees without tipping over, but I can also paddle it with a double bladed paddle sitting down as well. It's 10 inches deep because that's about as deep as you go in something like this without hitting your elbows. Um, I decided to go a little taller in the bow just to get it up and over the waves and also to see if the asymmetrical system would work. 
And in these particular canoes, what I did was I decided to go for a flat rocker. I'm coming back to really liking a flat rocker for a pack canoe. It's a little bit tighter tracking than my personal maneuverability preference, but it just dramatically improves the sail performance on these little boats because this end dri drives down into the water, helps lock things in so it doesn't pivot in the gusts, and also it resists leeway a little bit more. So that's just my personal choice because I like to sail and I'm, you know, I have health issues so I don't really paddle much these days. For other people, they might want to put a little bit of rocker in there as well. It's just kind of personal preference. So those are kind of the overall dimensions of this boat. Um, I did something with the skin that I haven't done much of before, and that is I added an extra couple coats of coating to this. And this is something that I was told would work with this coating system, but I never knew, and so I never really did it. Whenever I wanted more durability for a boat, I would just go for a heavier skin because I was worried that extra coats would sag. But with the new application system that we've been using for this coating for the last couple of years, you can actually put additional coats on spaced an hour apart and just continually build film thickness on this, which might be a better strategy for a more durable boat than paying the weight penalty of a heavier skin. So that's something I did, seemed to have worked out, didn't seem to sag or drip like I was concerned about. So that's the thing I tried on this boat as well. Um, one of the big things that I did here is I just made a little bit of a change to the movable thwart slash backrest system that I've been working on. And if you go back to the last video where I'm talking about the hybrid canoe, I really go into a lot of detail talking about how this system works. Basically, it is a combination, really simple wooden backrest that also doubles as a portage yoke that can be taken out from under these bungee loops, put in the middle of the canoe, and then bungeed in place, and then you can carry it on your head that way. But the one thing I wasn't enjoying about that particular system was that with just a straight board across under these, it was putting the backrest just in exactly the wrong position where it was hitting me in the back just a little bit too high. So what I decided to do here uh, with this particular canoe was I modified the idea here where before what I had was a flat board with a couple pegs going in that would capture inside and outside the gunnel right here. This time what I've done is I've taken the board itself and I've dropped it down to the top of the gunnels basically and I've used that board as the inside that's going to catch the inside of the gunnel there. And then just like before I had the peg to catch the outside of the gunnel and this drops this kind of center here that rests against your back down here a lot lower and it's just a little bit more comfortable. And if you wanted to be even more comfortable than that, it would be totally trivial to glue an extra piece of wood on down here and then put a little foam strip on the front of this. The one thing that I didn't do here that I should have done and that I will do on the next one is I should have extended this peg up above just like you see on the portage yoke in the plant. So check this guy out. Make sure you get good views on this right here. It's really a convenient system. And it's nice because these little bungee loops here, as you see in the other videos, are good for boards that can catamaran two canoes together. It also works as a self-rescue system. Uh, the flotation and the seating in this are identical to what I would do was doing last time, which is four inch diameter pool noodles laced into the frame, and then a thermarest ridge rest doubled over as my seating along the bottom here. Uh, the, another big change for this particular canoe that I probably shouldn't have experimented with because it's leading me down a rabbit hole I don't want to be in right now is I decided to try a totally different type of sail than the sails I've been working with so far. So if you remember the last videos, the sails that I'm building for these canoes that are just integrated and they always sit in there tied up and you can pop them up whenever there's a favorable breeze are just a flat cut sheet of polyester that's got a little sprit in it. Really common style of sail. You see it on a lot of the Australian sailing kayaks and it works pretty well for a canoe this size. It's pretty small. It's only about one and a half square meters, which you wouldn't think would be able to push you through the water very well. But when you're talking about something that's this light that doesn't have a rudder and doesn't have any foils, it actually doesn't take much breeze to push you up to hull speed. Now the limitations on it are that it's only going to sail across the wind and it's only going to sail downwind.
wind. So you're never gonna like beat into the wind like a sailboat, but my personal opinion is that it doesn't make a lot of sense to put a whole lot of thinking and time into a high-tech sail system for something that is inappropriately shaped for sailing as a small pack canoe like this. So really what I came up with was the right solution, but then I just had to experiment with something else. I went ahead and I went online and I bought a beautifully built kayak sail from Falcon Sails. It's their 1.4 square meter sail. And I just went ahead and tried to rig it up on this. And it was a little bit tricky because this particular sail, it's meant to go with the system that they sell. So it's kind of a retrofit and it's a little bit janky for those reasons but I managed to get it on here I got it working I took it out and sure enough a sail that's actually cut like a real sail is going to drive a little bit harder and it's going to point a little bit higher and that's exactly what I was expecting and that's exactly what I got from it and now it puts me into this conundrum where I'm like do I leave the sails that I just designed or do I start over from scratch and see if I can cut a real sail shape which is going to mean a totally different fabrication system than the one that I already made the videos and the plans for. So I'm not sure if it's worth it at this point. It really isn't a major gain, but if you're kind of a performance junkie like I am, little gains mean a lot to you. I don't know if it matters as much to other people. I'm probably gonna experiment with different sail shapes in the future. I'll show you this sail because it's absolutely beautiful. And if you're looking for a great sail for your kayak, I highly recommend the Falcon sails. So just like, just like in my other sails, it pops up like this. And just steps really nicely in the bow there. And the way that he's got this is a lot different on a kayak. He's got a carbon fiber mass and stays that come off here and a beautiful carbon fiber boom. It's all just exquisitely well done. But I can't afford that much carbon fiber and I've got a different system anyway. So I just kind of set it up with my aluminum mast here and an ash boom and it just barely fits. I've got a little out haul out here. And then the actual attachment points are something that I don't need with my other system, but for this one, I had to kind of change things up a little bit. So I went to Duckworks and I bought a couple of these open clam cleats right here, or I'm sorry, open uh, fair leads. And I route the sheet here through the fair lead and then back to my little clam cleat right here, which is a really nice solution because it pushes this line forward and out of the way. So it's not as much in the way if you wanna do kind of a combination paddling and sailing at the same time. So it's a little tricky because you can't do this with nesting canoes because you can't have anything on the inside of the gunnels. But the nice thing about just building one canoe like this is I don't have to worry about that and I can put things wherever I want. And that's kind of the nice thing about building your own canoe in general you're not afraid to experiment and you can kind of mess around with things and really fine tune the rigging because just little differences in how things are set up can make a huge difference in the usability of something on the water. And truthfully, that is most of what I do here, which is just experimentation. You know, I sit here in the shop, I come up with ideas. Most of them are probably bad ideas. And then I build boats and I try them out. And eventually, if you just build enough of something, you start to get a sense of how things work. And once in a while, you come up with a really cool idea. So that's definitely what we strive for here. This is my latest pack canoe. I'm gonna take this guy out, do a little bit of testing on the water, see how it feels. And then my next project is actually something I wanna tell you about because it's gonna be at least a few weeks, maybe even a month before I get this up on YouTube. And what I'm gonna be doing for the next couple of weeks here is I'm gonna be using this same system to build a 16 foot rowing sailing boat. I'm just really curious to see if I can take this same system that I designed for building these pack canoes and larger canoes and see how far I can push it. So I'm gonna build something that's kind of you know, roughly similar to a smaller St. Lawrence River skiff. I'm gonna stick a little sail on it. We'll take it out. We'll see how it works. And if you wanna watch the process of that being built, check us out on Instagram. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.